What makes the anniversary so special in Guernica is that Guernica was already a very important symbolic place before it was bombed on the 26th of April 1937. So taking this symbolic place, which is then destroyed, and that destruction being the subject of a huge propaganda campaign with the rebel military forces led by Franco and Mola lying about what happened, accusing the Basques of setting fire to their own town, where actually the German and Italian air forces had bombed the town. And of course, there are witnesses to the event, and there's an article in the New York Times and the London Times by George Steer about it. Um, so that added, that propaganda campaign, those lies added to that symbolism of the destruction. Then you had Picasso's painting, which added a further layer of symbolism and took it also to a very international scope. So studying the destruction and the anniversaries is not any old town that we're studying. It's actually a place that's already hugely imbued with symbolism, meaning, and significance on all kinds of levels. So studying how that memory evolves over time is very interesting for us to see exactly how those narratives get constructed, those narratives of memory of events that later are linked with heritage, are linked with identity, evolve with time. And what we do with the anniversaries is, of course, we get in there and see exactly how that memory is constructed at particular moments. So Guernica and the symbol of its destruction works on all kinds of levels. So in studying the anniversaries, we're trying to understand a little bit about how all those different layers of symbolism around the destruction of this town work and evolve through time. Then in 1977, you get historians, because they're the importance of setting the record straight, telling the story of what actually happened in Guernica to counter the 40 years of lies by the Franco regime. In 1987, we see a complete shift. We see a memory boom accompanied by an attempt to institutionalize the actual commemorations by the town hall. And the group representing what was the original clandestine left, now representing more Basque nationalist interests, separating themselves from this to try and represent a grassroots uh, commemoration. 1997, we see the, the commemorations directed to a more international audience, including the whole rhetoric of peace, and included in that is the act of reconciliation between the German government and the people of Guernica. If you think of Tinkerbell, there's these magic fairy dusts, and Guernica has this kind of magic fairy dust, and everyone wants to rub up against it to see if that magic will rub off on them. Franco and his rebel military forces won the civil war. And for 38 years, we had a dictatorship in Spain during which you could not commemorate the anniversary of the destruction of Guernica. And those 40 years of silence during which commemorations and anniversaries could not be celebrated in Guernica or in Spain also added a kind of element of meaning and symbolism of interpretation to the destruction and to the, which, the ways in which memory could and could not be expressed, at least publicly. The Basque government in exile, first in London and then in Mexico, would mark the anniversaries of the bombing of Guernica with speeches, with radio announcements, or with their newsletters and, and publications in exile. And then what's very important as of the 1990s is it's the first time that the witnesses of the bombing, those people that now elderly were children at the time and actually saw it, are given a chance to speak and are given voice on public platforms in Guernica. So then you get these people telling the stories of how they saw the planes and how they saw the pilots, actually the pilots' faces, as they were shooting, shooting down at them from the airplane. So you get the first oral histories and witnessing of the event. In the town of Guernica, adopting elements from other, from other commemoration sites, they, con they actually built a mausoleum in the, in the town cemetery to, rep to actually hold a commemoration event that would be served to combine the civic and the religious elements that had existed prior to the institutionalization of the commemoration event. To sum up, it was really based on combining both civic and religious elements with the cre creation or the construction of a mausoleum in the actual town cemetery, where they have hold a commemoration ceremony, combining elements of obviously the, the tangible heritage with the mausoleum and the bell from the Church of San Juan, 
and then more cultural intangible elements such as the Basque dance. And another thing we have seen with Guernica is the, the international dimensions. So Guernica has learned a lot from Hiroshima, for instance, from Coventry, from Dresden, for, uh, from other places in their commemorative events. So there's a discourse that's going on there at the international level. With anniversaries, what's very revealing about studying memorial processes and anniversaries as part of that memorial process is that you can see how memory and memory narratives and how memory events are interpreted changes with time. So it seems like a place like Guernica, which is so iconic, has one meaning. And yet what we see by looking at the anniversaries is that actually there are many meanings. 2012, this April, will be the 75th anniversary, and this is going to be a massive anniversary in Guernica. There have been a lot of political changes. There's been the end to the ETA um, violence. So it remains to be seen what this new anniversary will look like.